could be run out. Oh, oh shit. with David and Jonathan is a former apprentice jockey turned comedian. At one stage, he tried to combine both jobs by putting down the horses with clever one-liners. <laughs> Lee Mouth. <laughs> I told him. <laughs> with Gary and Rory this week is another former jockey, now the presenter of the BBC's racing coverage, who once said, horse racing is the new rock and roll, an analogy that didn't really hold up until Lucky Lad choked on his own hay in 1997. <laughs> <laughs> show by asking the teams to guess the lame excuses given by sportsmen to explain away their failings. David, Jonathan and Lee, your question involves the Argentina and Real Mallorca goalkeeper Carlos Roa, the man who put England out of the World Cup in June and Chelsea out of Europe last week. Roa indulging in a spot of gamesmanship. It's Batty and England again are out of the World Cup on penalties. Real chance perhaps here for Flo! Oh, what a good save by Roa going to his right. <coughs> I don't like the look of him. No? <laughs> um. Shall I ask the question now? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I've got a cab wait, you know, like to get home and okay, no, come on. <laughs> Thanks for your help. <laughs> now, despite thwarting this country's <laughs> finest. I don't know. You could have had Valerie Singleton for the same money. <laughs> I've had Valerie Singleton, and she isn't worth the same money. <laughs> now, despite thwarting this country's finest, Carlos Roa has said he won't be playing any more football after the year 2000, and he's refused to extend his contract after that date. What, David's team, is the reason for that? Please. I think this was because uh, what he's done is he's left because he's got a new job advertising Walker's Crisps. Because after the success of uh, Salt and Lineker and Michael Owen's thing, they've got a new flavour called Bovril and Lucky Little Bastard flavour. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to look forward to it. Eh? <laughs> Must be quite a big packet then. Yeah. I don't want to know what comes in the little bag in that one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Has he fallen out with his wife, Annette? Annette? Why? She's got a six yard box. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, what like... happened with the jockeying, then? <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Rowe is an is anagram he... of arse cholera. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to get that, <laughs> believe me. I do know the answer. Can I give you the answer? I think yes, I know please. the answer. He's bonkers, anyway. Obviously, you can see that from looking at him. He's got that sort of George Michael haircut. And only someone who is clinically insane would go for that. He believes, I think, he's one of these people who believes that the, new, the uh, year 2000 is going to be the end of the world. And why does he want to fanny around playing football when he could be out... Dying, presumably. <laughs> Is the correct answer for three <laughs> points, yeah. Yeah, the answer is that Carlos Roa believes that the world will come to an end at the start of the millennium. Now, we asked Roa if he'd do an interview with us to confirm the story, and he said he'd do it if we paid him $1,000. So, Carlos, is it true? <laughs> so, that was money well spent. <laughs> Shafted by an Argentine yet again. <laughs> but we got the last laugh. We post-dated our cheque to 2002. <laughs> Carlos Roa believes that Christ will return to Earth on the first Saturday of the new millennium, unless Sky get the rights, in which case it will be moved to Sunday at 4 o'clock. <laughs> Although when the world does end, you can guarantee Alex Ferguson will be tapping his watch and going, hey, there's another two minutes yet. <laughs> Gary, Rory and Claire, this month the jump jockey Richard Dunwoody broke the all-time record for most career victories. In fact, the record would have come sooner, but for this. Military Academy and looks like trouble have been uh, duelling for the lead throughout. Principal is down and uh, blundered very badly in Unseat of Richard Dunwoody. That leaves a clear third B, the one. Which uh, race course was that, Claire? Doncaster. Very good. Which race was it? Uh, the 2.20? No, it was a... No, the 1.50, eh? So oh, never believe any tips you get from Claire. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, what was Richard Dunwoody's excuse for falling off his horse, Principal? Jenny Pittman trains Principal. I think probably yeah. she'd threaten to kiss him if, if he won. <laughs> so, if they worse than death, I will fall off. <laughs> principal. Are there, what rules, are there any rules guiding what you can call a horse? Because I always wanted to call... If I owned a racehorse, I'd love to call it my knob. <laughs> <laughs> my knob's coming That's first yeah. again. <laughs> My knob way out in front. There's yeah. a student inquiry about my knob. <laughs> oh, my knob is being beaten. <laughs> Not for the first time today. I'm very sorry, sir, we're going to have to put my knob down. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's something you've heard before. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Someone had put one of those, like, hedge things across. Mm. <laughs> wasn't fair, was it? <laughs> straight over. Did he do it for a laugh? <laughs> Evidently not. <laughs> Did he just fall because he fell asleep? I mean, racing's so boring, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> He's a little charmer, isn't he, eh? <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of sunshine. But it gets, Listen, in, gets was, in the way of sport. I so. was so excited at that thing on your side. <laughs> That's you riding again, isn't <laughs> <laughs> it? Again. Later. Get the whip out, for God's sake. <laughs> what did you ride? Do you ride jumps or flat? I rode uh, flat mainly, a little bit of point to pointing. How big are those horses, average? Big enough. Well, roughly what? 16 hands. So you've had 16 hands between your legs? <laughs> <laughs> I've not had to pay for it. I bet even Jonathan can't beat that. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't bet you. They're just nailing a shoe to my knob. <laughs> Is this going to go on all show now? <laughs> now, that's something I'd like to see. Oh, no, it's not. <laughs> David Gow's available for Panto if you want him, by the way. Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Behind you. Had, by any chance, Dick Dastardly <laughs> tied the horse to the starting post with 200 yards of elastic. <laughs> I think it was um, something to do with sex. Was it? You got any clothes? Because mm, he's a. Oh, right, it's something to do. It, it means so, having sex with It's a woman. something to do with Lady Godiva. Ah. I do know this. And he's a bit of a muff Godiva, is he? <laughs> <laughs> no, Richard Dunwoody had um, been exposed in a very exposed <laughs> exposed in a very prestigious Sunday newspaper, not, um, for sleeping with a girl who did Lady Godiva rides through somewhere or other. She rode naked on horses, which Comedy. is very pleasurable. Um, and <laughs> this was given as an excuse, she said. <laughs> <laughs> she said that um, he had slept with her so many times just the night before he was so tired that he fell off his horse. I'll give you three points for that, <laughs> yeah. The answer, yeah, well done. The answer involves a professional Lady Godiva impersonator called Faye Lawrence, and here it is, straight from the horse's mouth. When Richard found out I was a modern-day Lady Godiva, he was so turned on by the idea, he took me back to his flat in Fulham, where we spent the night in the bath, horsing around, and unfortunately, he was so knackered the next day, he fell off his horse. So that's what happened to my loft insulation. <laughs> No, I'll tell you what he said to me. Oh, yeah? No, he told me that he'd slept with her one and a half times. Honestly, he said this. And I How said, do you what? sleep with someone half exactly. the time? You either do it, go in, finish the job like a proper professional, or... <laughs> it doesn't count. You can. You can so I'll come back and finish it on Tuesday. You can't. <laughs> Could you, you use me a builder? <laughs> Richard Dunwoody used to ride Minnie Homer, the horse belonging to comedian Freddie Starr, until he had a fall at Wincanton. It was the only fall in history where race marshals tried to have the owner destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end of that round, Gary's team have three points and David's team have three points. We introduce a brand new round now called Temper Temper. We show a sportsman having a lovey fit, and the teams have to guess what they're getting so cross about. Gary's team, it's the future of tennis for you, Venus Williams, having a bit of a strop during this year's Australian Open. Point. Game Devon course. The problem is no one is distracted. I am not causing a disturbance here. I can't tell that. Well, I think the referee should come out because no one is disturbed. 
if you'd like me to call the referee. Come on out. Absolutely. This is out of control. So, Gary's team, why did Venus go off on one? Was the tournament the PMT Open? <laughs> <laughs> Typical male comment, I'd have to say. Posh bird. Yeah. <laughs> Bit of sexual frisson there now, I think. <laughs> yep, should be when, when you did that audition for Planet of the Apes, they wanted the costume back, you realise that? <laughs> Yeah, that's love. <laughs> <laughs> Is it because someone shouted out that she looked like Lennox Lewis in drag? <laughs> <laughs> was she annoyed because she wandered into the kitchen and forgotten why? Because I find that very annoying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That well, I imagine every time you wander into the kitchen, you wonder why. Quite <laughs> <this morning. laughs> well, had she eaten a Kit Kat and not taken all the silver paper off? And... <laughs> now that is annoying. <laughs> Sure. Gone to the pub, <laughs> thinking Juventus had won two 0 Got back home and found out United had won three two. That was bloody annoying. <laughs> I think the the beads. This was three days later. He came back from the pub, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> the beads of yeah. uh, the beads got loose, and the beads were on the court, and they were considered an obstruction. They were considered dis um, distracting. She's very, very good. I'll give you three points for that. Good. Yeah. Let's see the source of her distress. Venus was doctor point because some of the beads in her hair fell out on court. Either that or for having very heavy dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> Venus and Serena Williams are known as the Spice Girls of tennis, which is bad news for their chubby elder sister who can't play, Ginger Williams. <laughs> Venus says she has sophisticated tastes and is a big fan of Hamlet, whereas Martina Navratilova <laughs> prefers a slim panatella. <laughs> David's team, we take you back to England's dramatic one-day international against Sri Lanka at Adelaide in February, when Darren Goff got a little hot under the collar. But Chandana's in. Goff's upset. So is Mahanama. Stewart's not happy. Verbal's exchange. Oh, and from Goff, well, he clearly thought head should roll, and it was nearly that of Mahanama. So why was England's premier fast bowler so not? David's team. I, I think he was annoyed because what happened was Ian Botham rang him to say, on the way home is the only chance you can get me wacky backy, and he thought he was being asked to kidnap the Sri Lankan wicketkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> I, he must have been, you know, you'd be cross, they, they make them dress these days, when, the good old days of the cricket wives, where they gone? Now they go out looking like a bunch of quick fit fitters. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, he got in for the glamour, the prestige, the stylish trousers, he came out looking like a buffoon in one of those shell suits that Gary used to try and flog. <laughs> Says a man who's dressed like Fu Manchu's Ren Boy. <laughs> you can come again. I think but you've heard that before. <laughs> David? Nick? It's a cricket question. Any ideas? Nope. <laughs> you, know, you like that game, you should watch it. It's a good game. <laughs> The rules are a bit hard. He used to watch it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I think what it was was that um, that the what's his name McManama or whatever his name McManaman. was. McManaman. What's his name? Mahanama. Ma what? Mahanama. Do 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 do. do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> all the ladies. Hey! <laughs> yeah, I mean, didn't they sort of clash on the way through as they were taking the run? Yeah. Clash of shoulders. Absolutely right. So here is the incident that caused his displeasure. Off now to Mahanama. Chance of a run out. Oh, that looked like a barge. Totally unacceptable if it was, and a clear case of obstruction. <laughs> so. <laughs> Mum! So, Darren. <laughs> So Darren Goff mimed a headbutt when Mahanama appeared to obstruct him as he was about to run out the other batsman. The same thing that happened this weekend in the West Indies. But the tantrums all started earlier in the match when the Sri Lankan leg spinner... Mo He's uh, not a leg spinner. <laughs> Isn't he? No. Off spinner. Yeah. <laughs> I wish you could have read it when you were at the crease. <laughs> You say the name as well. Mala no, 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 you're on Mala your own. Mara. Cocky twat. Come on, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, 
Yeah, Sri Lankan leg like spinner, cocky twat. No, that's not right! <laughs> <laughs> when the Sri Lankan leg spinner Morelli Turin was like no ball for spicy, throwing. Please. And the Sri Lankan team walked off the pitch. There can be no greater humiliation in cricket than to be no ball for throwing in an international match, except perhaps David, than to be no ball for throwing and to be hit for four. David Gardapol. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Nord, Nord, Four Nord. <laughs> Did you get the part in Little Lord Fauntleroy then? <laughs> <laughs> During the same three-way competition, Australia's Shane Warne protested that the Sri Lankans were sledging him in their own language. Although, just for your information, Shane, uppity fatty wanker is not, in fact, a Sri Lankan word. <laughs> Darren Goff is known as the crowd-pleaser in the England team, following in the footsteps of his great hero, David Gower, who pleased crowds wherever he went. West Indian crowds, <laughs> Australian crowds... <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have six points. Next up is our photo fit round, where we transform three faces into one abominable being. Gary's team, can you unscramble this unlikely menage a trois? <laughs> <laughs> That's my agent. I think it's fine, isn't it? If you turn I him think... upside down, it's Gary Bushel. <laughs> with, a, <laughs> with a cigar in his eye. <laughs> I think the top bit is Rory's bottom, isn't it? <laughs> Well, the top is... It looks like Graham Gooch's hair. No. Is it Virginia no. Wade's armpit? <laughs> <laughs> now you're giving me the horn. <laughs> <laughs> the cigar does look familiar. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> we don't need to know the name of the cigar. <laughs> Who smokes cigars like that? It looks like that um, Most people. boxing promoter. Don King. Don, Don King. King. Don, Don King. Don King, Don yeah. King's chin and cigar. Just Ooh. the middle bit. The middle bit. Horrible face. Is it Collymore? Yeah, Stay the man. maybe. Very good. Oh, very. Okay. And the top bit, oh. Gary? It's sweaty. It's got to be someone who does a physical sport. It's not snooker or darts or football. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nice to have someone posh on my side. She's got a lot in common with David, both posh and bolding. Gary, she's not good. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Very beautiful. You giving up on the hair? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's split it up and see who indeed it is. Don King, yes. Stan Collymore, yes. And Jacques Villeneuve. He has so gone bald, hasn't he? He has. Oh, he mm -hmm. He's wearing a helmet, you know. He also gets plugs for him. Something yeah. worth thinking about. <laughs> <laughs> so, you get two points. Jacques Villeneuve employs the unusual technique of learning all the Formula One racetracks by rollerblading around them, lapping Damon Hill's Jordan on the way. <laughs> Don King is still under investigation for the controversial drawn fight between Lennox Lewis and Evander Holyfield, but that hasn't stopped him making preparations for September's refix. <laughs> David's team, okay. unstitch these three. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who it is, but I suspect if he was in the West Country, he'd be worshipped like a god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, make us fertile. Yeah, it's a wicker man. And whatever you've got there, I'll tell you what they're trying to do. I think this is, might be that new genetic mutating of food. And they're, they're trying to breed all the ingredients of a kebab in just the oh. one animal there, look. <laughs> <laughs> Is it that, that cousin of the Queen they kept in the attic for all those years? <laughs> <laughs> there goes the CBS. Um, is, this the, is this the weirdest vegetable they ever sent into that life? <laughs> the bottom part, is that Graham Lassau tasting that homemade mayonnaise you're so fond of? <laughs> oh, what? Oh, what? He likes cooking! <laughs> it's that Nigerian, it's that Nigerian... The middle bit's a dog, you can't fool me. <laughs> Many have tried. It's a dog of some sort, but that's not okay. its own hair. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie and Bob. Valerie and Bob. Bob. Yes, I'll give you a point. Wow, well done. Okay. okay. We're going to have to add it across, aren't we? Yeah. David, I can't believe you haven't got the bottom bit. No, it's it's David. Okay. <laughs> David. <laughs> David, how could you not know that? Claire, darling, it's, <laughs> Claire. it's been so long. It's really lovely. I know you don't associate with many people called Darren, but I think it's Darren Goff, isn't it? Is it? Well, you can think all you like, but it isn't. Oh. <laughs> 
with the old lipstick on? No. Oh. Uh, Taribo West. The Taribo, Taribo West. West, yeah, I'll give you a bonus Top point bit. for that. Let's split it up and see who they all are. Is that the Nigerian player? Yeah. Cheers. Taribo West, Bally Regan Bob and Alex Stewart. Uh, yeah. Alex Stewart says his favourite single of all time is The Summer of 69 by Brian Adams. David Gower's favourite single of all time was the final run in his Magnificent Three <laughs> against Pakistan <laughs> in 1981. <laughs> Taribo West now plays for Inter Milan, where teammates who have seen him in the showers confirm that he really is a natural green. <laughs> Bally Regan Bob's career on the track was so successful that he ended up being stuffed and put on display in the Natural History Museum. He's in a glass case next to the one with Steve Ovet in it. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have seven points and Gary's team have nine. It's time now for our regulars to cop a feel of a total stranger as we play Feel the Sportsman. Gary and Rory, you're up first. You have 90 seconds to work out who's come between you. Blindfold's Claire, on. Have you not asked Gary to tuck his shirt in? <laughs> <laughs> I did mention it, Gary. Yes, I did. And my knob is carrying a few extra pounds today. <laughs> You've not left the vacuum pump on again, have you? <laughs> As ever, my knob is happy when the going is wet. <laughs> good to soft. Wet to soft. Good to soft. No good when it's soft. As quickly as possible, can we have the first mystery guest, please? <laughs> OK, and your 90 seconds start now. <laughs> what are you doing? What's that noise? Oh. <laughs> oh. oh. Is it Venus William? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, joke. <laughs> Bad one. A naked oh, hang human. On. Boxing gloves. It's always a giveaway. Get in the shorts, Gary. Come on. Do. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. He's got any. He's <laughs> got his ear missing. Yeah, Holyfield's um, going to come on this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's going to happen. We can barely afford Jonathan Ross. <laughs> British heavyweight. Yeah. How do you know that, Gary? Uh, Just by feeling him. That's incredible. Uh, <laughs> Why don't you lift him up? See how he is. Go on. I can't. Herbie Hyde. <laughs> Herbie Hyde is the correct answer. <laughs> David and Jonathan, if you'd like to take your positions, please. Oh, I hope I get a girl. I've, we've never had a girl for me on this show, and I'm quite, you know, frankly, I'm getting a bit bored. We always have really old blokes or, you know, sweaty geezers. <laughs> and can we have our second mystery guest? <laughs> Noise. <laughs> the eating crisps. <laughs> Your 90 seconds start now. Hell of a creek. Oh, gold. <laughs> I don't know how he is, but he should wash his underpants more often. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like he's standing in a hamper. <laughs> oh, a... oh, good. Oh, there you go, we've got the mixed nuts in. That's it. Truffles. <laughs> what the? Oh, you oh, you're just taking the piss this week, aren't you? <laughs> It's, uh, I don't you... know what, if I was him, I'd go to a doctor and get this biopsied as soon as possible. Because <laughs> this is a very unpleasant <laughs> swelling. <laughs> what is going on now? Wow, it's like, it's like Chris Evans' head. It's enormous. <laughs> He's on a balloon. He must be a balloonist. Yeah. Is it one of the... Well, it can't be. Is it one of the, uh, it one of the Montgolfier brothers? <laughs> yeah, well, it can't be Branson. He wouldn't be here on time, would he? <laughs> He's a cheeky little fella. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a smile on his face. He's like a little cheeky little imp. <laughs> Pierre, what's his name? And um... Brian Jones. Is Brian Jones. Correct. Yeah. Oh. So, at the end of that round, David's team have 10 points and Gary's team have 12. <laughs> now,
We end, as always, with the name game. The team in the lead goes first, which is Gary's team. Could you pass those to Rory, please? Yes. Claire? As many names as you can muster in the next 90 seconds, and your time starts now. Uh, Slaphead Italian Brilliant. manager of... Uh, Viali. Uh, Gianluca Viali. Thank you. Daddy. Ian Boulding. Very good. Ian Boulding. Oh, father. Oh, oh, he's he's a Ian. <laughs> uh, next, <laughs> mummy. <laughs> no, we can... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> jockey, uh, ex-jockey, race or strange, silly name. Very silly name. Silliest Scooby name. Scooby Breezy. <laughs> Correct. Talking of silly names. <laughs> you know, in my fictional horse I mentioned earlier. Mr. My knob. My knob. Yeah. Mr. Plural. Nob. Plural of knobs. Knobs. Christian name Nobby. like that, only adjectival. Nobby 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 Nobs. Nobby Nobs. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a Bayern Munich player, German for Finch, funnily enough. Uh, <laughs> That's giving it to him, isn't it? Fink. German for Finch. Fink. Fink, yeah. Um, what's his first name? Torsten. Torsten Fink, yeah. This is an ex uh, Bolton player, plays at West Brom now. I think he's Dutch. Um, he sounds a bit surreptitious. On Snakers, and his first Richard. name Richard Snakers, that's oh, correct. Um, this man. first name led the Argonaut. <laughs> Jason. Jason. Oh, very good. <laughs> uh, second name. <laughs> Whistle. Excellent. It was Jason Tipton. Very good. You moved on to 18, which means you need nine to win. That really, nine, that really nine. Really you can through. do it. Oh, it's so easy. Mm. Especially, Especially if I've Jonathan got Breeze. someone's dad. <laughs> How easy Nick. was that, Nick? OK, well, um, your 90 seconds starts now. All right, um, it, the second name is like a big chocolate bar that a trucker would like. Go, wow, that's good, there's lots of chocolate in that. Jonathan Boost. No, where have you been, Jonathan? That's it, there you got it, OK. Uh, the, this woman, uh, she's a, uh, a tennis lady, she's got a big nose, big old honk on her, uh, she's got great legs. That's narrowed it down, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> it's banned as something generator. <laughs> there you go. OK. This First one is, uh, is an old... It was a racehorse train a long time ago, and uh, you would say to someone, Oh, my love, my... Darling. Yep. And the first name would be... Uh, <laughs> that's right, Fred. Um, OK. He's a goalie. I believe he's a goalie. And it's, you would say it with... You would say it with... And for Blackburn. Blackburn. He's a goalie for Blackburn. And you Flowers. Would, yep. Finland. First name? Tim. Yep. OK. Um, she's a runner, barefoot, like Sandy Shaw, but she was a sweet little thing. It's like, perfect. Oh, darling yeah. something of May. It would be the darling... But, um, yeah, the darling... Uh, Lola. Um, Lola? Zola. What's it? Zola. Lola. Zola. Zola. All right, OK. This one, it's like a dodgy off-road vehicle. <laughs> Vehicle. <laughs> well, I think we might have won. Well, today. surprise, surprise, the scores at the end are David's team with 15, but the winners are Gary's team with 18. <laughs> so our thanks to Gary, Rory and Claire, David, Jonathan and Lee. We're all off to watch a tape of the Hungry Game to see if we can recognise any of the urban players. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. With comedian Carolina Hearn and country music superstar Kenny Rogers, The Frank Skinner Show, here on BBC One, next.